A lot of people may find it strange that Ayn Rand was skeptical of the theory of evolution. As one of her devotees and eventual fuck buddies once wrote, I remember being astonished to hear her say one day, after all, the theory of evolution is only a hypothesis. I asked her, you mean you seriously doubt that more complex life forms, including humans, evolved from less complex life forms? She shrugged and responded, I'm really not prepared to say, or words to that effect. I do not mean to imply that she wanted to substitute for the theory of evolution the religious belief that we are all God's creation, but there was definitely something about the concept of evolution that made her uncomfortable. But I don't think this should be particularly surprising when you look at the foundations of objectivist morality, because they are essentially based on a flawed understanding of biology. In her book, The Virtue of Selfishness, she says, There is only one fundamental alternative in the universe, existence or non-existence, and it pertains to a single class of entities, to living organisms. It is only a living organism that faces a constant alternative, the issue of life or death. On the physical level, the functions of all living organisms, from the simplest to the most complex, from the nutritive function in the single cell of an amoeba to the blood circulation of a man are actions generated by the organism itself and directed to a single goal, the maintenance of the organism's life. This, of course, is a gross oversimplification of biology. These physiological processes do not direct themselves at the single goal of preserving that one individual organism's life. They are directed more fundamentally at the preservation and proliferation of genes. Yes, they do keep the organism alive, but they only keep the organism alive because it needs to be alive to reproduce. None of these physiological processes would exist without reproduction. As far as your physiology and the genes responsible for that physiology are concerned, you live, first and foremost, to make babies. Rand herself never had kids, of course, she probably couldn't have tolerated them. And her attitude toward reproduction was this, the mere fact that man has the capacity to kill does not mean that it is his duty to become a murderer. In the same way, the mere fact that a man has the capacity to procreate does not mean that it is his duty to commit spiritual suicide by making procreation his primary goal and turning himself into a stud farm animal. And I actually agree with her on this. But I agree with her on this because I do not believe that the facts of biology can be used to justify any particular moral position. I think morality is a lot more complicated than that. I don't believe that the ability to reproduce means that one ought to, but I also don't believe that the ability to survive means that one ought to. This is a non sequitur. Now I desire to live as much as Ayn Rand desired to live, but the mere fact that I am alive is not what justifies that desire. The way something is does not determine how it ought to be. Ayn Rand, however, believed the fact that a living entity is determines what it ought to do, so much for the issue of the relation between is and ought. But the whole reason any organism is, the whole reason it exists, is because of reproduction. Organisms are the way they are and they function the way they function not because these functions facilitate survival per se. They facilitate survival only because survival facilitates reproduction. So while I don't think you can morally justify anything by simply pointing to biology, if you're going to say that your morality is objectively correct because it's based in the facts of biology, you should probably first try to understand what those facts actually are.